G'day, I'm the Asian Dad, and we're going to look to this Dell XPS 1595-10. It's a 15-inch laptop, and it was released in mid-2021. Now, it shares the same chassis as the Dell Precision 5560, which I did a review video earlier. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll put a link in the description below, and you'll see a little pop-up here. And it also shares the same chassis as the Dell Precision 5550, which I also did a video about, and I'll put a link in the description below. Now, I will probably more than likely refer to the Dell Position 5550 for the keyboard trackpad and the feel of this because it hasn't changed. It says the same ports as well, so it has three Thunderbolt ports as well as a standard full-size SD card reader and a headphone jack. So that hasn't really changed. So we're going to look into the temperatures and fan noise of this computer, look at the speakers, and we'll also look at the thermals of this computer and the behavior of the processor. Now, as always, I will be putting timestamps along this video so you can skip to the different sections that you may be interested in just to save you a bit of time. Now, first off, let's look at the configuration of this computer. So with the Dell XPS 1595 10, it, for the processor, it is using the 11th gen Intel Core H processor, so it's Tiger Lake H processor, and you can either get an i5 or i7 or i9. Now with the Dell Precision 5560, you can get the Xeon version, but this one is only up to the i9. Now with the RAM wise, it can go up to a maximum capacity of 64 gigs of RAM. As for the storage wise, it's got two slots of M.2 NVMe SSD. And as for the discrete graphics, it has two options. So your first option is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050. And then there's also the RTX 3050 Ti model. Now I've got the Ti model, so we're gonna test this one out. And as for the display wise, there are actually three options. So you got the full HD option, which is rated to 500 nits of brightness. And then there is the 4K option, which is rated to 500 nits of brightness. And there's also a 4K OLED version, which was rated to 400 nits of brightness. Now, both of the 4K has touch and the full HD does not have touch. Now I've got the normal 4K version, which has the 500 nits of brightness. And we have a look at the color gamut later in the video. Now, the display wise, it has an aspect ratio of 16 by 10, which is absolutely great. I love that for productivity work. And it still has the Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. And of the webcam, it still is running the 720p webcam. Now, there is no privacy shutter for it. So it would be nice to actually see a privacy shutter and also a 1080p option for the webcam. Please, Dale, let's. we are in 2021. And we do do a lot more video conferencing and also video content creation as well, too. So let's see a 1080p option for the webcam. This is a recording from the 720p webcam from the Dell XPS 9510. This is the video and audio unedited so you can hear and see what the quality of the webcam is like. So as always, I've got two types of lights currently turned on. I've got my one studio light turned on and also the down lights in this room turned on as well. So I'm gonna turn off my one studio light off and hopefully you see this adjusted. It adjusted pretty quick, I must admit. And I've got two down lights in front of me and two down lights behind me. Now the two down lights in front of me is quite far away so there's not much light hitting on my face. So this is what I would call a dark environment. Now if you're in an office environment, you should actually get more light than what I'm currently in. And I'm gonna turn my one studio light back on Hopefully you see this adjust and I'll hopefully better quality light give you better quality picture. Now I'd definitely love to hear your thoughts about this webcam, so put a comment below. There are four speakers on the XPS 9510. There are two located on either side of the keyboard and there are another two more on the other side of the computer. Now when I test out the maximum volume of the speakers, it managed to measure in a peak of 93 decibels, which is quite loud. Now, if you're doing a video conferencing or even doing a presentation outdoors or at a cafe, you shouldn't have any issues. But what is very interesting is because the set shares the same chassis as the Dell Precision 5560, now that measured in at a peak of 94.5 decibels. This was a little bit quieter than that, not by much, which was a bit of an interesting story there. I did multiple tests and that's what it came out at. Now, as for the sound quality of the speakers, it still sounds like the Precision 5560. It has a very good amount of bass, has very nice balance between the mids and highs, as well as has quite nice acoustics really to the front, and the clarity is not bad at all. So 
These have very decent speakers. Audio quality of the speakers of the XPS 15 9510. Now the computer comes with a 130 watt power adapter and it charges the computer via the USB Type-C. The XPS 9510 has two battery options. You can get a 56 watt hour battery or an 86 watt hour battery. Both are six cells and both support express charge, which means you can charge the battery from zero to 80% in one hour's time. Now I did perform my battery life test on this particular unit. Now this one's configured with an i7 with uh, RTX 3050 Ti card and has a 4K display. Now I tested my five different modes so in best performance it managed to get one hour and in better performance it managed to get one hour as well and in better battery life mode it managed to get two hours and in battery saving mode it managed to get three hours and in my media mode it managed to get three hours and 30 minutes. Now that is a little bit lower than what I got from my Dell Precision 5560. So my thoughts are is that it's due to the 4K display and also the RTX 3050 card because it probably consumes a little bit more power. Now as a disclaimer, my battery life tests, I do put a consistent workload across all the system resources. So you should expect a little bit better numbers than what I would give you because most applications won't hit all the system resources in a consistent level. Most times it's just spice and do burst speed. So I'm just giving you the worst case scenario. The weight of the Dell XPS 9510 is 2.02 kilos add in the 130 watt power adapter becomes a total weight of 2.46 kilos that you might be carrying around with you. As for the temperatures and fan noise of Dell XPS 9510, when I put the computer on load, I found most of the heat was concentrated near the top center of the keyboard. Now that's unsurprising because that's where the discrete graphics and the processor lives underneath there. Now, when I took my measurements, my ambient temperature was 21 degrees Celsius and my ambient room noise was 37 decibels. Now, just before I give you the measurements, just to give you a little bit of reference point, your average hand is anywhere between 33 to 35 degrees Celsius. Just take that in mind to see how hot things are compared to your hand. I took my base measurement when the computer was on idle and the hottest air on the keyboard measured in at 36 degrees degrees Celsius and as for the fan noise it stayed at 37 decibels so it's practically quiet. The core temperature was at 45 degrees Celsius on average. Then I put the computer on 20% load so that's average use so that's tasks like office productivity work, streaming videos, surfing the web and the hottest area on the keyboard measured in at 44 degrees Celsius and as for the fan noise it spun up to 40 decibels. And as for the internal core temperature, it averaged at 77 degrees Celsius. I then put the computer on 50% load and the hottest air on the keyboard measured in at 47 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 43 decibels. And as for the internal core temperature, it averaged at 85 degrees Celsius. Then I put the computer on 100% load and the hottest air on the keyboard measured in at 50 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 46 decibels. And as for the internal core temperature, it averaged at 83 degrees Celsius. I also took measurements of the bottom back cover and the hottest area measured in at 41 degrees Celsius. And of course the fan noise stayed at 46 decibels. So as you can see from the temperatures, I really wouldn't put this computer on your lap when this computer is running on load. I really don't suggest most laptops to be putting on your lap anyway, because most of the laptops do run quite a bit of heat. Let's have a little stability performance of the processor in the XPS 159510. Now this particular unit is configured with an i7-11800H processor 
and look in the Intel website has a maximum turbo boost of 4.6 gigahertz and a base clock speed of 2.3 gigahertz at 45 watt TDP and it can go all the way down to 1.9 gigahertz at 35 watt TDP if it's trying to save power or it's running really hot but ideally we want to see it sit above or be around about 2.3 gigahertz ideal situation now i've got this computer connected to mains power and set to best performance power scheme and i've got the thermal management set to ultra performance so i set it to at its best for it now i've got this computer currently running on 100 percent load for both the processor ram hard drive and the discrete graphics which is the geforce rtx 3050 ti and it's been running for over five hours for the process and i can see the base of the speed of the processor is sitting anywhere between 2.7 to about 2.9 gigahertz so on average around about 2.7 gigahertz i would say it's stable at and i can see the internal core temperatures is an average around about 84 degrees celsius this is sitting really well and considering i've actually also tested out the position 5560 which shares the same chassis and that has an i7 11850h processor so that's actually the v pro version and that was on the stability performance it was just sitting anywhere between 2 to about 2.5 gigahertz so it was actually sitting quite below the base clock speed sometimes and sitting at its base clock speed so whereas this one is above its base clock speed which is looking fantastic so this processor is really ideal i would say it's this i7 11800h processor let's have a look at the behavior of the processor to see how long it's able to maintain high turbo boost for so i've still got the computer connected to mains power and i still has the thermal management set to ultra performance and it, uh, trying to achieve uh, close to about 4.6 gigahertz on this i7 11800h process so i'm going to put this computer on 100 percent loads for all the system resources start the clock watch how that runs right we can see about 4.2 gigahertz it's gone up to start to sort the internal core temperatures shooting up quite high so of course after the first 10 seconds we're at about 80 degrees celsius sitting at about 3. gigahertz now after 20 seconds still just climbing up for internal core temperatures here so about 94 degrees celsius now we're starting a little bit with the processor to about 3.4 3.7 gigahertz are about the after 45 second mark we're still sitting around 3.3 to about 3.5 gigahertz passing the one minute 30 mark and we'll soon be approaching the minute and 45 second which is the big deal for the Dell precision 560 that started to throttle itself down see that's doing the same thing here we're starting to drop a bit of speed at a minute and 45 seconds but we're not dropping massively we are just dropping a little bit to about 2.7 to about 2.9 gigahertz just flatlining here to that two minute mark but it is staying consistent here not doing too bad it's not really dropping down below base clock speed which is at 2.3 gigahertz as for the keyboard trackpad and the chassis it hasn't changed since the precision 5550 and the xps 9500 so i'm just going to refer you back to my precision 5550 video and my thoughts on the trackpad the color gamut coverage of the 4k 500 nit brightness display on the xps 9510 it managed to measure in with a result of 100% sRGB coverage, 99.9% .9 Adobe RGB coverage, and 96.6% DCI P3 coverage. This is extremely high. I hope the photographers and videographers find the sweet spot for the brightness of the 4K 500 nit brightness display. 
to try and achieve a target around about 120 cantaloupe per square meter. If you go to the display settings and have the brightness value, I'll make sure you actually turn off this automatically change. Have the brightness value at around about 38 in value. That should give you a cantaloupe per square meter of 120. If you go around about 37, it will be doing okay as well. They'll get you around about 116 cantaloupe per square meter. I did perform the benchmarks for this XPS 9510. Now this particular unit is configured with an i7 11800H processor with 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte SSD and the RTX 3050 Ti. I'll put up the scores for Passmark, Citibench R23, PC Mark, 3D Mark, Crystal Disk Mark, Geekbench 5, Blender, Eugene Engine, Pugin After Effects, Pugin Premiere Pro, and Spec View Pref. Far Cry New Dawn, and Immortal Phoenix Rising. Now having a look at the results of the scores, and you see some of them side by side with the previous model, which is the XPS 9500, you can definitely see it has improved quite a little bit. So I can definitely easily recommend that it is a better performer than last year's model. Overall for Dell XPS 9510, it's good to see that they've actually got better thermals in it and it has a better performance. But is this a big upgrade compared to the XPS 9500 for myself? I wouldn't say this is a big upgrade and if you're holding a XPS 9500 and looking to upgrade to this or if you're looking at upgrading, I'll probably say skip this version and wait for the next version because it's only a little bit of a minor upgrade in performance. But if you are using it for work, then maybe spending the extra money on the XPS 9510 could be very useful because it does help you with more speed. But there hasn't been any extra functionality out of the XPS 9510 compared to the 9500. Now I hope you find this video informative or you enjoyed it or even support my channel, smack that like button for me, it does help me out. And if you haven't done already, subscribe my channel by hitting the subscribe button. I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll see you next video.